Yeah, bingo. We're back. Community matters here on Think Tech. And what's the word of the day? Nice and chi. You're going to know that word, you're going to remember that word, because in the future you'll, you'll hear about Dyson some more. But let's talk about what Dyson is doing right now. Dyson, what are you doing right now? Well, right now we're supporting an initiative called Bill 480. Um, it's a bill at the Honolulu City Council that would phase out a variety of single-use plastics. Um, and right, as a kid, this is really important to our future, so we're trying to help pass this bill. Okay, let's break that, let's unpack that, as they say. First of all, um, you're, you're homeschooled, but you're equivalent to a senior in high school now. Yep. And you're going to be going to college next year. Yep, that's it's, correct. Have you settled on what college? Well, um, as I'm a dual credit student at Kapiolani Community College, I think I'm going to go there, finish up the 200 level classes, and then transfer over to UH Manila. And you're going to study what? Political science and communication, so dual major. Try to change the world. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, yeah, I wish I had that kind of focus when I was your age. <laughs> <laughs> it's remarkable. Okay, <clears throat> so then you, you've, you've adopted, you've supported, you're, you're here to speak, to advocate for Bill 40, which is about, you know, environmental. It's about keeping plastics out of our lives and out of our environment. So what's the problem with the plastics in the environment? Do I really care about it? I mean, you know, we here in Hawaii, we're a little, little tiny, 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 tiny state. There's a lot of plastic stuff outside of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, this is only about the city and county. This Bill 40 is in the city and county. Mm. It's a city ordinance, a bill for city yeah. ordinance. So why do mm -hmm. I care? Should I get excited about this and why? Oh yeah, hell yes, you should get excited. And Here's some of the reasons why. So first of all, plastic pollution, a lot of people do call it an environmental problem because that's the most obvious thing you see, right? Like a turtle that has the straw set up like a pound, that looks like an environmental problem. The thing is though, that plastic pollution is actually a human health issue and also a social issue. So for example, there was a study done that found that we humans ingest about a credit card's worth of plastic every week. Can you imagine eating a credit card every week? That's uh, it wouldn't not, be good for me, I can yeah, tell you. Yeah, not the greatest thing to think about. And plastics do have potential health hazards to our body, although they've only been in our environment for like approximately 50 years or so. We didn't have plastics. Exactly. I know that because uh, in, uh, let's see, the Dustin Hoffman movie, uh, back when <laughs> his father said to him, young son, you know, it's all about plastics. You've got to get into plastics. That's when they invented plastics, mm. you know, in the 60s, I think. Anyway, um, problem, you know, the problem is um, you know, doing this uh, in the city and county so that it does have an effect. Um, and, and what effect would that be? Mm. In other words, if I took all the, the plastics out that this bill going to take, what effect would that be? What effect on, on the reef? What effect on mm. the oceans? What effect on the fish? You know, uh, I know about microplastics because we eat microplastics all the time. Yep. And I feel them building up somewhere. I don't know where, but they might, they're building their up. Blood vessels. Yeah, who knows meat. where, yeah. They're bad for people. But, but what about the environment in general? Um, what, what is the problem with plastics in the environment? Yeah. So certainly, if Bill 40 passes, um, you'll see less rubbish on your beaches. Um, rubbish, people don't, for the most part, don't like seeing rubbish on the beaches, whether it be straws, Tourists, tourists don't like that at all. Yeah, tourists don't like it either. And we depend, we get billions of dollars in revenue from tourists. And if these tourists are like, well, I don't want to pay $1,000 to go see some dirty beach in Hawaii. I'm going to go spend it in Tahiti instead. Yeah. Then we lose that money. And it's a lose-lose situation. Yeah. So, yeah, what about those of... awful pictures of, of birds, seabirds? Mm where they, they died and somebody dissects them and opens them up and their whole body is loaded with plastic. Mm. What about the whales, you know, that carry lots of plastics in them their whole lives because they can't distinguish it from other, other materials in the ocean because they eat the plastic. Um, how does it affect the animals and the birds? Yeah, well, a lot of times what happens is that if they ingest plastic, it can be fatal to them. For example, if you have a whale, that consumes a bunch of plastic bags and whatnot. It can block its digestive system, and then it's going to end up starving to death, um, and then you just have a dead whale that's rotting out of the ocean. Yeah, well, that's tragic. They're, they're, they're under threat of extinction anyway. 
And I happen to learn, like birds a lot, so I, I really, it's horrible to see a picture. Imagine how much worse it would be to see it in real life. A bird that, that, that died from plastic covering his inside. Awful. So, um, you know, I, I guess the, the question is, um, why can't we deal with the plastics in some way other than Bill 40? For example, mm. why can't I make a big oven somewhere, put all the plastics in there, and burn up the plastics, so we don't have to worry about this. Why can't I do that? Mm, OK, that's a really good question. So part of the problem with plastics is that when you burn them, they emit certain gases, like methane, because plastics, petroleum-based plastics, you make them from oil. Yeah. And when we burn oil, it's a known fact that that contributes to climate change. Yeah. Plastics are no different. When you burn them, or if you throw them in, uh, what do you call it, you let them break up, they will release greenhouse gases, and that will contribute to climate change. There are certain studies that have found that the amount of that plastics contribute to climate change is going to increase in the future. And so that's part of the problem with plastics, is that they're still contributing to climate change, and they're still damaging the ecosystem. They're damaging our health. And then the other problem, too, is when you burn them, you get this kind of weird ash. Have you ever burnt? Fork in a fireplace, like a plastic a terrible fork. Terrible smell. Fireplace. Yeah, it has that funky smell. It's like, ugh. That smell is the chemicals coming off of it. And so not only is it releasing greenhouse gases, it's also releasing chemicals that can be toxic to you. If you inhale that, that Indeed. is not good it for you. It smells toxic. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay, so um, what, what about the, um, this whole notion um, of the plastics, they, they, in order to make the plastic, you mentioned to make, mm -hmm. the, make the plastic, we are giving off carbon right, into the atmosphere. Yeah, greenhouse gases. And right. then when they degrade, we are again yep. giving off carbon yep. to the atmosphere. And that suggests that there's really no easy solution by burning them um, or burying them even because um, they're, they're, they're bad at both ends, in the creation mm -hmm. and in the deterioration. So what, I guess what you're saying is, let's not use them at all. Let's cut down on our use of the plastics. And in that way, we won't manufacture them and put the carbon in the air that way. And we won't have to worry about them being deteriorated and put the carbon in the air that way. So this yeah. is a sort of catch it at both ends kind of solution, which sounds admirable. But then, you know, you get into a pretty serious, I'm going to call it social question. How in the world are you going to do this? How are you going to wean people away from plastics that for the past 50 years, almost 60, maybe 70, uh, we have been using in every which way? Um, the name of the movie was The Graduate. With Justin. Uh, maybe, I'm pretty sure I didn't watch that movie. Check it out on Netflix. <laughs> his father was telling him to go into plastics, young man. Um, anyway, or his girlfriend's father, whatever. So I guess my question is, what does this bill provide? Because the provisions, you know, the, the details. And, you know, you, you know, the devil is always in the detail. So what are the details of this bill? How does it presume to stop people from using plastic? Yep. So Bill 40, what it does now is that it's in a phase out. Rather than like, okay, here's one day and we're going to ban everything one day. It's phased in a way that it starts out with, okay, first we're going to make it so that way you have to do it by request. That's pretty easy for businesses to do. It's not asking for too much. So that's the first thing they're going to implement. The year after that, which is 2021, I believe, it's going to ban the items that are easier to get rid of, like straws, utensils, the things that there are lots of good alternatives to. And there's also been like this big movement to get rid of them, right? And then finally in 2022, we have the items that are going to take businesses a bit more time to run their stock out of, like um, clamshells and things like that. And so by doing this tiered approach, the hope and the goal is that we're going to give businesses enough time to run out their stock. That way they're not left over with a bunch of materials that they don't need. Is that the way you wanted it? I would say... Didn't you want to have this happen right now, today? I mean, that would be amazing. But at the same time, you've got to remember that in Hawaii, it's not easy to run a business. And the point of this bill isn't to kill businesses. The point of this bill is to protect the people and the planet. And so killing businesses doesn't do you any good for helping the people. And so by helping to preserve businesses, as well as the other two parts of the triangles, we have something that's much more equal for everyone else. 
So why do you, why do you have different transitional periods for different kinds of plastics? Why don't you just give them all all the different kinds of plastics the same transitional period? You know, like four years, whatever it is. And at the end of that time, you can't do this anymore. Instead of mm -hmm. having it, you know, the reason I ask that question is that it's going to be hard to enforce this anyway. The more detail you put on, you know, the pro prohibition, the more d difficult it is for any law enforcement agency, or for that matter, for all the retailers who will have to follow this, presumably. Um, why don't you just have one deadline at the end? So maybe I, I, should, I should have made this clear, but it's actually three deadlines. Um, and the plastics are grouped together in specific ones. And like I said earlier, it's to give some leeway to businesses. Um, the industry was asking for more time, which is totally understandable. Uh, and we want to be as accommodating as possible. And so the hope is that by splitting, instead of like, okay, we're going to do all plastics by 2022, we're going to split it so that way. We're going to do the easier stuff first and the stuff that's going to take you a little more time to run your stocks out next. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. So you, I, I take it you talked to some businesses mm -hmm. in order to determine how much stock they had and how much stock they needed to run out. Mm -hmm. So who did that? What, define your organization for me, Dyson. Mm -hmm. Who's in it? Who's on the street? Who is doing the legwork? Absolutely. So it's really a coalition between a variety of organizations. So some well-known ones would be Cocoa Hawaii Foundation, Surfrider, Sustainable Coastlines, um, and they kind of work under the umbrella of Zero Waste Oahu. And so together, we're all like parts of the puzzle, and together we get a whole puzzle. And so, for example, um, Surfrider would reach out to businesses and ask them, like, like what do you need? What are your concerns? Um, sustainable coastlines can try to gather community support for this. As a youth, my job is to really get youth to come out to these hearings. So it's hard. A lot of these hearings are like at 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock, and people are in school or at work. So getting people to come out, having people be able to you know, speak up and have their voice heard is a challenge, um, but it's one that I'm willing to accept. That's great. That's great. So when you say come out, what do you mean? Have them out in a, in a meeting or protest? Have them out on the street? What, what, do you, what, what are the operational functions of promoting a bill like this? Mm. So the main thing when I talk about to come out is to come out to hearings. So, so far, I believe there has been five hearings for Bill 40. And so at each of these hearings, the council members are going to listen to members of the community. They're going to listen to businesses, the industry, environmental organizations, and try to weigh all of those opinions together. And then they make the decision. At least that's what we're hoping they do. And so part of the, mo or the most important thing is to get people to come out and try to support Bill 40, because if everyone's at work, everyone's at school, and no one comes out, it looks like no one supports Bill 40, even though maybe it's just that because they're at school or work, yeah, they this, can't take time off. This, this, this is the same problem. Mm -hmm. Everybody's sitting on the bench waiting for somebody else to do the work. But you're doing the work. <laughs> this is pretty good. <laughs> so <clears throat> what kind of response uh, have you had you know, when you go out and talk to people? What kind of response has the community provided? What kind of resistance has the community provided against the bill? So for example, I told you I went to 7-Eleven and they handed me the form and they said, <laughs> would you like to sign our bill, one for, our bill 40 form? So wait a minute, this is, this is against Bill 40. Have you, have you got the one for Bill 40? I'll, I'll sign that one. We didn't have that one. And so you, know, you get different uh, interest groups, if you will, uh, taking different positions on this. Some of them are going to be opposed to Bill 40. Mm -hmm. What experience have you had? So my experience has really been that community members, like individual members of the community, especially the younger ones who are around my age, they really strongly support Bill 40. Um, people who are in my generation, we understand that the longer it takes for us to deal with this issue of plastic pollution, the bigger the impacts are going to be on us and the more we're going to have to carry. And so we want something to be done now. Um, a lot of times, small businesses, have already been taking these actions, like Banan, for example, they're using all compostables, they haven't had any problems, really? and yeah, not even in and supply. The, and the cost of the non-compostable is not significantly more than plastic? Apparently not enough to put them out of business, and they've been doing pretty well. Um, Banan is, I would say, well known in terms of in Hawaii. And so really, it's been, what I've been able to see is that a lot of really small local businesses support this. 
Um, but then larger ones like 7-Eleven, ABC stores, Zippies, they've been coming out in opposition and claiming that this is going to hurt small local businesses. When in reality, small businesses are already doing this on their own. They didn't even need a bill for it. They realized it's our job to take care of the earth. It's our job to protect the people. So let us make this decision. Hmm. That's pretty good. So you actually haven't had a lot of resistance. Um, Not in terms a, of the community the or small businesses. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. It's good for Hawaii. It's good to see people get on, on board with that. Now, what about in the city council? What has, what has it been like? Uh, I understand that the mayor has said, mm. Mayor Caldwell has mm. said, that if the council passes this bill, he will sign it. This is a big step, isn't it? Absolutely. It's good to have that kind of support from him because that has an effect on the whole process. Mm -hmm. But what about the council itself? What kind of response have you had from them? What kind of contact have you had with them? So the fact that Bill 40 has managed to pass so many hearings does show something. It shows that the council members, the majority of them, are in support of Bill 40. We know that there are council members who oppose Bill 40. Um, Carol Fukunaga and Heidi Tsuneyoshi opposed Bill 40 at the last hearing. Um, but now that it goes to the full council hearing, we have all the council members on. And so I personally am not entirely sure which ones are exactly in opposition or in support. There are a few that I could say are in opposition or support. For example, uh, Councilmember Manahan is probably in support since he introduced the bill. Um, and Councilmember Fukunaga will probably still be in opposition to the bill since she opposed it last time. Um, but a lot of them are in the middle. Um, maybe they lead one way toward or another. And really, that's where the community voice comes in. Because when they hear your opinions, that can help to build their own opinions as well. And then they'll understand, like, my constituency supports or opposes Bill 40, therefore I should support or oppose Bill 40. But the debate is over, and it's just going to go to a vote? Or will there be yep. further, further testifying? So the final, um, final hearing is the date that you can submit your testimony. So that will be on December 4th. The hearing, the full council hearing starts at 10 a.m., although Bill 40 will probably be heard at around 12, since it's further down the agenda. Um, but yeah, if you want to testify on Bill 40, you want your friends to testify on Bill 40, then please do. You can submit testimony online at the city council website, or you can, or, and you can go in person. You can do either one. So in person would be at Honolulu Hale. And you are sending email out as I received from you, yes. <laughs> uh, telling people what the story is mm -hmm. and uh, telling them how they can submit testimony if they support the bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad impressed to find with them that. helpful. This is, this is just like they do it you know, elsewhere in Congress, what have you. But I wanted to put this in um, you know, a kind of perspective. Uh, you, you mentioned that other states have done similar bills trying to control plastics. Um, is it the same bill? Is, is this a uniform bill? Or is this a, a Hawaii special bill? So, specifically Bill 40, it would only apply to the city and, count, city and county of Honolulu um, because it's being heard by the city council. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in terms of what it directly impacts, we can't say affect what happens in Japan directly or in California or even on the Big Island because this is restricted to Oahu. That's our um, domain. The hope is that, though, is that if we can pass a bill like this, because this is one of the more comprehensive, one of the most actually comprehensive bills that we've seen in the country relating to single-use plastics. Other municipalities have done similar things, like San Francisco and Seattle, um, but theirs wasn't nearly as comprehensive as ours. Um, close, but not quite. And so the hope is that if we can do this, we'll be the tip of the spear, and we can show other places that, hey, look at what we did. It's possible, it's real, and it's coming. That's so leadership. are you going to join us or not? Because leadership. that's exactly that's what great. we did for like our renewable energy goal. We did it first, and guess what? California, New Mexico, they followed us. Yeah. yeah. So um, you, it's just, you say single-use plastic. That's what this mm -hmm. deals with. Yes. What is a single-use plastic, and what is not a single-use plastic? So I would say the overall definition of single-use plastics is kind of what it sounds like. It's a plastic that it's meant to be used just once and then thrown away. So that's things like plastic forks, plastic straws, right? Usually you, if you go to Starbucks and you grab your Starbucks drink and it has a plastic straw, you drink out of it once and they throw it away and it's a done deal. Um, and so that's what's really what Bill 40 is targeting. Because to ban all the plastics that we have, like chairs I'm sitting on, the equipment that we're using, that's not, not realistic. Oh, 
Well, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> but like my glasses, <laughs> that's n to do that overnight is not realistic. But for single-use plastics, which are plastics that you know, we just use once and then throw away, despite the fact that plastics are meant to be durable and to last. That's a problem, and so that's really what the you're not going after is. that. You're going after single use. Of, it's the yep. plastic bags, plastic uh, foam Forks, containers, yep. Our spo foam. Uh, spoons, uh, uh, straws, all mm -hmm. that. Yep, yep. That's that's actually there's a modesty in that. You're not trying to completely change the world. This this sounds like you're working at the margins. Maybe we'll change the world later. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my next question: Why not the state legislature? They mm. they certainly have the jurisdiction to do this. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you go to them, or are they on your list next time around? So we actually tried something similar at the state legislature. Uh, I believe the number would have been SB five two two, which it did pass, but it got gutted. And so anything that would have banned or phased out single-use plastics was cut out. Um, I believe there's styrofoam in there, um, straws, all that got cut out. And instead, they just said, we're just going to do a working group that's going to figure out what we should do exactly. But then that means it's another three years, two, three years until oh, yeah. we actually take yeah, action. Yeah. And, so, story. Yep. and so that's why we have the city council here taking action, making moves to do this. That's impressive for the city and the it city is. council. Kudos that, to them. That they see and act on this issue before the legislature can get its act together. That's really interesting. So Liz, I want to put it in an even larger perspective. So Dyson, you're part of a, a movement, I would say. Do you, you, you see Absolutely. yourself that? And the movement is an environmental movement. And you know one of the principal points for you and the young members of this movement are to protect the planet in the future. It's your planet, not my planet. Your planet. It's our planet. We all okay, it. thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, how do you see this in terms of the you know, evolution of our society, our, our mm. civilization? Because if you don't do something, you know, we're going to be stuck, at least on plastics and on the environment and who knows what else. You know, there are so many issues, so many threats to our quality of life, um, both both uh, philosophically and, and um, you know, practically in the way we live every day. Um, so is this, is this, how do you see the connection between the work you're doing on Bill 40 and the larger picture about saving the planet, saving the society, saving humanity? Are you into that? Ooh, that's a home run question. Um, I mean, for me personally, it all comes back to taking care of the place that you grew up in, right? The analogy is if you live in a home, your mom and father take care of you. And so what do you do when they grow old? You take care of them. It's the same thing here, right? I grew up surrounded by a community, wonderful community that I call Hana, and in an amazing land that we call Hawaii. And so it's what can I do to give back to the community, to the land that gave me so much? And so really rather than, oh, we need to go save humanity, for me personally, it's like, yeah, we are helping to better our land, but it's not for like, oh, let's go save humanity. It's to protect the people and the planet and the things that we love. Okay, let me step back a little and ask you this. <laughs> What's your next step after Bill 40, assuming knock wood, knock wood, that it passes like oh, this yeah. week? <laughs> okay, what's your next step? You're not going to say, oh, well, okay, all done, all finished, <laughs> all fixed. No, there's more, isn't there? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is celebrate the holidays. <laughs> that's the first thing that's coming up. Fair enough. 2020. Um, the next thing I'll do is probably vote. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, we want that. And then really uh, tying in with voting, a lot of it is like voter registration, right? A lot of people don't think of voter registration as an environmental issue because it's not. It's a social issue. And so how do we get young people registered to vote? And why we have a god-awful voting record, um, less than 50% of people coming out to vote. It's something like and, 40. Yeah, and so getting people to vote and getting them hyped about it, that's what I'm hoping to do next. And that's different than the plastics thing, because you're not seeking legislation necessarily. You're seeking to change the way people see their relationship with government, mm -hmm. see their duties uh, as a citizen and trying to be, trying to engage with government. I always say mm -hmm. we are the government and the government is us so we can never forget that. Absolutely. That's actually part of what we're doing with Bill 40. Um, me 
and all these other organizations trying to get people to come out to testify and get civically engaged, that's like a first step too. If you've never really cared about politics, that's a first step for you to get involved with your government, especially if you see a bill get passed and you realize like, oh, I testified for that bill like five times. My voice actually did matter. So maybe I can actually vote and it will matter because I have friends and I've met people who are like, oh, voting, that means nothing. Or like politics, ew, that's disgusting. And so it's like, how do we change the narrative and say like, no, politics and voting is not you, it's yes. It's something awesome that you get to do. It's not something you have to do, it's something you get to do. Well, if, uh, let's assume that you are successful on Bill 40. <laughs> you don't have a lot of time before the 2020 elections. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're going to have to hurry uh, along. Yeah, we're going to have yeah. to hustle. Yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing, I want, you know, what I get is that you care a lot about Hawaii. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people your age are big, ambivalent about whether they're going to stay here or not. I mean, you know, we went to a Thanksgiving dinner and uh, <laughs> the kids were not clear about whether they wanted to stay here or not. I think they were they're being tugged away or, or pushed away by educational, you know, aspirations to go to, go to the mainland and make their life. Because once you go... There's a fair chance you're going to stay, one, one combination of events or another. And so what I get from you is you have no intention of leaving. This is your commitment. You're going to be here. You're going to do these things here in Hawaii. You're going to, help. You're going to work to help Hawaii. Right? Absolutely. That is the entire point of what I'm trying to do is, yeah, how do I give back to the community? And I feel like I can give back to the community by staying here and learning about it and keeping in touch with the issues that are afflicting. Yeah, a lot of issues, a lot of issues, <laughs> you know, we're only beginning, you're only beginning on all the issues. Oh, yeah. After the show, I'll give you a list. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But one thing I, I just I want to explore with you is that, you know, it's important uh, that we do this. It's important that we show the world we can do this, at least the United States, and, um, and that we, we, we are leaders in certain things, like in energy, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But there's other things too. We can, you know, we we can be a leader in Aloha, which covers a lot of ground and yes. all that. Especially now in a land of in a, in, a, in a country of divisiveness, we can actually show them you don't have to have that. We can we can be together. Um, all this suggests, though, is that the skills you're working on, projects that you're wrapping around, um, you could be successful and valuable um, if you go to the mainland too. You know, I mean, I, sometimes I, I see these ads for people running for office mm. in other states, and I like them. And I get these emails, <laughs> and they say, why don't you give money to this candidate who's running in another state? Um, if you like this candidate, I'll mm. write a check to this candidate. Because we're national now. Mm -hmm. You know, politics yeah. is, has become national. You're talking about local politics, but in fact, politics has become national. And I, and I wonder if in, in your planning, in your perception of the future, whether you think you might take some of these Hawaii lessons and mm. help the mainland too. Well, I personally think that, yeah, politics are national. Obviously, we have Congress, um, and then you know, from Congress goes to the state legislatures and the municipalities. But as we're seeing with Bill 40, you can make the biggest difference, not at Congress, but on the small localized levels. And that's where the actual change happens. Because imagine, imagine Congress trying to pass Bill 40. Like, no offense to Congress, but I think that would be extremely difficult in comparison to a nine-member you know, Honolulu City Council. And so the thing, too, is that with City Council, it's way more accessible. How many people in Hawaii can go fly over to D.C. and testify for a bill? Not that many unless you're like, specifically a lobbyist, you're paid to do this. How many people can come out to town to testify on Bill 40? Probably more people than who can go out to Washington, <laughs> D.C. And so that's really the thing. It's like, yeah, it's a big picture. And you've got to remember that there's a bigger picture. But ultimately, if you start small, you can expand a lot faster, yeah, a lot faster than if you keep on trying to go for the top and you just make no headway. And so that's really where my idea of community comes from. But yeah, you start small and localized. Very wise, Dyson. <laughs> Very wise. Dyson Chi, thank you for coming around. 
We hope we can get together with you again and follow on this issue and other issues you're associated with. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. This is a blast. Aloha.